St. Louis Grinds is sponsored by Undeniably Dairy, your local Midwest farm families. While most of us are in our REM sleep, with a visit to our favorite coffee shop being less than five hours away, dairy farmers are milking the cows that will be part of our morning coffee. You know, when the barista asks 2% or whole milk. Dairy farmer Michael Turley of Rolling Lawns Farm gave me an inside look at the process from milking the cow, bottling the milk, to even enjoying the milk in my coffee hours later. Now St. Louis Grinds is a series that will highlight the coffee shops around St. Louis, but none of this would be possible without the dairy farmer. So I sat down with Michael Turley to learn a little bit more. One of the things that was very fascinating to me is just you know seeing what went into it as far as the milk comes out 101 degrees you lower it down to 37 and can you talk a little bit more about that that process for everyone first welcome to rolling lawns uh, uh, we're honored to have you and the this is a lifelong uh, endeavor for our family and so for 113 years we've uh, we've milked cows for a living and provided dairy for uh, for for lots of folks uh, the farm and as we viewed it, uh, milking happens twice a day, every day. So no, no matter what the elements are, what the, what the temperature is, we're milking cows. So at uh, 3.27 a.m. we get after it. And uh, uh, milkers are on at 4 a.m. every morning, 365 days a year. Uh, we do the same process in the afternoon. Pasteurizer, so he does all of the pasteurization, homogenization. And then we transfer each fluid product over to, this is the ready to eat side. Just like today when it was pouring down rain, we showed up. It doesn't matter if it's pouring down rain or if it's two feet of snow, you guys are out there. I have to, the milk's always flowing uh, regardless of uh, climate. So within the same day, I mean, from you're waking up, you're milking the cows in the morning, it's coming over here to get packaged, and then you're telling me that I'm gonna have that fresh milk that day. We've, we've got a dairy farm where we can do that. We can milk the cows and deliver the product uh, to the consumer in the same day. The, the dairy community in general, there's 30,000 dairy farmers in the United States, and the freshness is probably the number one characteristic of our product, uh, no matter how it's being used, whether it's in a latte or it's being used for cheese or any other amazing form. And so to, to have a farm where we can actually work with the cows, enjoy their product, process it and deliver it to consumers in St. Louis, uh, is, uh, it's, a, it's a real honor to do that. It's our small contribution in the food system. Yeah, and, and again, we're trying to make dairy interesting. We, we want it to be in flavors that people enjoy and appreciate in a natural form and with nature's most perfect product, which mm -hmm. is milk. I think I hear the milk truck getting ready out there, so uh, let's go ahead to Blueprint and enjoy a cup of coffee. Blueprint's one of our best customers and we can't wait to get there. Let's get it. The milk was bottled and ready to ship. So we left Greenville and headed to Blueprint Coffee on Del Mar. When you walk into Blueprint, you see people working, people catching up with their friends, or grabbing their coffee and going on about their day. You see employees roasting coffee, handling online shipment orders, or serving up people's favorite coffee. Mine is a latte. The aroma will make you want to sit there all day. Now curious to learn more about Blueprint Coffee, we spoke with General Manager Peter Plank. What's going on, Peter? So I have a question. I love lattes. I'm fascinated by the froth process. What goes into it, and then, like, how do you make this whole scientific experiment taste amazing? Well, that's a good question. Um, it's a very, very simple recipe. The first thing you need is well extracted espresso, right? So um, you need espresso that comes from a quality source, aka quality green coffee 
and then need that to be roasted in a way that uh, serves and honors that coffee. Um, and then you need to then put that coffee into a grinder, grind it, and make sure it's balanced, it's tasting good. That's what we call dialing in our espresso. And once we have taken that quality green coffee, roasted that coffee, and gone through a bunch of quality control and then dialed in that coffee, we have a shot of espresso that we can put into our latte. And then that shot of espresso comes in usually at about two ounces. And then we add an additional 10 ounces of steamed milk um, when it is a hot latte. And then when it's an iced latte, that would just be uh, 10 ounces of milk that is not steamed, just chilled milk out of the fridge. So from my understanding, you all search all over the world for ethically sourced coffee beans. So what goes into that process of finding the right beans to bring back here to St. Louis? Our coffee is from all over the world. Uh, here at Blueprint, we really believe in sustainable partnerships. We have coffees from Guatemala, Ethiopia, um, Nicaragua, and uh, I actually just had the pleasure, the privilege of visiting um, Guatemala, and uh, we hung out with a bunch of farms down there, and we're deciding on uh, the coffees we want to bring into the shop next year from that region. Uh, this El Petreo is one uh, from Los Volcanes, who we spent uh, a good portion of the week with. Um, and this is just one of the examples of the coffees uh, that we bring throughout the year at Blueprint. Can you tell me a little bit more about Blueprint Coffee? Like what makes you all different from the next coffee shop? Making sure that you ethically source um, your coffee. We're proud to have uh, partners that we've worked for for a number of years, uh, that we have great sustainable relationships with uh, to where we make sure farmers are getting uh, their fair share um, in order to serve themselves and their communities. Um, and that is often uh, resulting in just wonderful, wonderful coffee. Um, and it always is resulting in great coffee. Uh, so, you know, these are very high quality coffees. You're gonna see a price point that reflects that to some degree, but that price point um, honors the hard work that our farmers are doing, you know. Uh, in my week at Guatemala, I just saw firsthand the sacrifice that it takes to bring quality coffee uh, to this table. And it's really an act of resistance, it's an act of love to make a great cup of coffee, um, knowing that these people devote the entirety of their lives and their well-being into giving us some great green coffee that we can then um, roast really, really well and then uh, make great coffee. All right, Peter, thank you for your time. Appreciate you sharing all your knowledge and wisdom with everyone watching. and. Uh, yeah, I'll be back. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. From the dairy farm to your coffee, I'm excited to show you some of my favorite coffee shops around St. Louis this season on St. Louis Grinds. On the next episode, we will visit a coffee shop that uses their coffee to build community in real life.